Today we're covering four submissions that every white belt should know. Of course I could cover the armbar, the triangle, the Americana, but there's already a million videos out there covering these moves. I want to differentiate myself. I want to show you moves that work for me as a white belt that are low risk, high reward, practical, easy to do. So without further ado, let's jump in. up we have the north south choke now i'm going to show this in slow motion so i can cover the details effectively this one's nice for me because i have a wrestling background and i find myself in the north south position quite frequently so as you can see here i'm in side control what i'm going to do with my hip side arm is tuck that under the hip my head side arm is going to loop over their head as i position and slide myself into the north south position as i do this i need to leave room so that my opponent's arm can slip its way through now, once his arm is through, I'm going to get a scarf hold position with my forearm underneath his neck. As that arm slides through, I am making sure that I'm keeping his cheek pressed up against my ribs. If I lose that position and he turns his face into my body, that's considered the counter and I'd lose the choke. Now, if you do this right, you can do the submission with one hand, but I find it to be even more effective if I can connect my hands. So as I connect my hands, I'm not squeezing my arms towards my body. What I'm doing is I'm planting my elbow strongly into the mat, and then I'm moving my body towards my elbow to close the gap where his neck is. This allows me to choke him much tighter than I ever could with my arm strength alone. Here I'm showing you the action of this without a drilling partner. As you can see, I can close this gap between my arms by moving my body towards my elbow. A lot of people make the mistake of trying to squeeze in with their arms and they find that they're not getting the choke. It's not as effective when we're using just arm strength. We wanna use our whole entire body moving towards our elbow to close that gap. Pay attention to what my hips are doing. I'm keeping them very flat and low to the ground. At the same time, positioning my collarbones near his collarbones. If my chest is too high up in his chest, I'm not gonna have the choke. And if I'm too low on his chest, it's gonna be more of a face crank. So you need to find that sweet spot. You're gonna want your forearm bladed thumb up across the back of his neck, keeping your bicep nice and tight against the side of his neck. In a nice little tip to make this even more effective as you crunch your body in towards your elbow taking up that space where his neck is you can flex your bicep this will take up even more space and it gives his neck a harder surface to press against making the choke a little bit more effective this one is near and dear to me just because i've been doing it since i've been a two-stripe white belt it's been part of my bread and butter game forever so if you guys aren't using it i highly recommend you at least try it if you like it start to incorporate it into your game next on the list head Head and arm triangle, a classic. It's very easy to do, it's very effective, it's low risk, high reward. And I just want to take a quick second to give my sponsor, X Marshall, a shout out. X Marshall does more for the community than any other brand out there. They sponsor over 300 athletes of all levels, and they even work with kids to help them on their martial arts journey. They've given away over $10,000 in gear in 2023. So if you want to look as good as me and probably even better, get over to X Marshall now and start your shopping. They're always running some kind of a deal. You can also use my discount code IRONWILL to save yourself some money. All right, well, I think that covers it. Let's jump back to the video. As you can see here, I'm inside control. What I like to do is I have my head side arm underneath his neck. I take my hip side arm and I use that to kind of pass his framing arm past my face. Once I get that framing arm past my face, I'm gonna clasp my hands behind his shoulder. From here, I like to go knee on belly and apply strong downward force into his torso while I pull up and apply tight pressure to the back of his neck and shoulder. This tends to make your opponent feel stuck, and if they don't have a lot of training, a lot of guys will panic in this position. They'll end up doing something stupid and giving you lots of opportunities for other submissions, but we're focusing on the head and arm triangle here. Once I feel I've achieved that dominant position and my opponent is slowly giving up or beginning to relax, I move into a mount position. Once I'm in mount, I don't want to hang out here too long. The longer I sit here in this position, the more he becomes aware of what I'm trying to do and has more time to solve the problem that I'm presenting him. So as soon as I feel comfortable, I look into shin sliding over his torso so that my entire body is on the other side of his hips, while also maintaining my grip that's containing his neck and arm. Now that I'm on the other side of his body, I can let my hips settle down towards the mat. With my free arm, I'm gonna pull my choking arm towards my body, and at the same time, I'm going to apply pressure through my chest into his shoulder. When you apply all three points, low hips, 
Tight choking arm, pressure through the chest into his body. This becomes a very tight choke. This is another one I love because if you mess it up, you're really not in a bad position. You're not putting yourself at high risk here. So if you haven't been trying this one yet, I highly recommend it. It's either gonna work really, really well for you or you're gonna struggle with it. But at the end of the day, that's what jujitsu is. You learn new techniques, they're difficult at first, but with practice, they become easier. So give this one a shot. I think you'll really like it. Next up, the Kimura from Guard. Now, this is really great for white belts because a lot of times, especially new white belts, they don't know where to put their hands when they're in someone's guard. Obviously, the correct place is on your torso, chest, low abs, somewhere in there, depending on what you're trying to do. A lot of white belts don't know that. They will put their hands on the ground, on the mat. They put their hands in places that are gonna get themselves in trouble. And the Kimura is the perfect opportunity to capitalize on those mistakes. So as you can see here, whether he puts his hand on the mat or he just puts his hand too low along my waistline and he's not applying the correct pressure, I can go ahead and isolate that shoulder I want to attack by getting a C-clamp grip across his wrist. Once I'm able to obtain this grip on his wrist, I'm going to open and twist my legs so that it turns my shoulders and upper body towards the shoulder I want to attack. From here, my opposite side arm is going to reach up over his tricep. As my back comes off the mat, I'm gonna take my free arm up over his tricep and reach back in to grab my own wrist. I prefer the C-clamp grip on my own wrist, but I've used monkey paw too. I've seen it shown with both grips and I've seen different preferences on this. I prefer the C-clamp. Now, once I have this, his shoulder is isolated and the position is locked. What I want to do is rewrap my legs here as I begin to rotate my upper body. I want to take his hand close to his back and ride that wall all the way up. If you're new to this move, I want you to be very careful with your training partner. A lot of people don't have great range of motion in their shoulders, and this one can come on really, really quickly. As you can see here, I'm showing you where my partner's range of motion stops. If I let go of his arm, I can show you how much more range of motion I have to complete the movement, which obviously gives me a lot of breaking power. This is the real deal. This will shred someone's shoulder, soft tissue, bone, all of it's gone. So be nice and careful. I can't stress that enough. Kimura's are some some of my favorite submissions. They're not overly complex. They're low risk, high reward. They're very effective. And the earlier you learn them, the more you start to recognize the opportunity to do them. So if you aren't training these yet, I highly recommend you start. This last submission I've seen go by many names. I think my favorite name for it is the shin breaker and extra credit points to any of you who know who made this submission popular. This could possibly be the easiest and most simple submission you see today, but could also quite possibly be one of the most brutal. You're starting in your opponent's guard and all you're doing is if you're reaching back with your right arm, you're looking to grab his right foot. Once I'm able to hook that foot with my forearm, I'm twisting my torso back to my starting position. As I'm doing that, I'm rounding my back out, applying a lot of force to his shin and ankle area. If you do this right, you're gonna put a tremendous amount of force on that lower leg. I've had this done to me, and it sounded like fibers were breaking inside my shin. One of the drawbacks of this move is that it's a little more risky because if you mess it up, you're putting yourself in a position to be trying so you really have to be aware of that threat. But I'm telling you, if you do it correctly and you set this in motion, it's a pretty easy tap. And if I can be completely honest with you, this is a pretty cheap submission. I definitely wouldn't do this if you're brand new at a school or visiting a school. Uh, you have to do it pretty hard for it to work correctly. So, you know, you need to be aware of your training partners. I am definitely never looking to hurt anybody. And if I'm gonna do this move, I'm gonna be somewhat gentle with it. And I apply soft, continuous pressure. I don't slam this thing on because you're gonna hurt your training partner and people aren't gonna trust you. And jujitsu is, a lot of it is about trusting your, your training partner. So don't do this one really hard. If you're gonna do this in a training scenario, nice steady pressure, give your opponent time to tap. Now, obviously, if you're in a competition or a self-defense scenario, I'd say go ahead and full send it, but definitely be careful with the people that you see all the time, the people that you train with, the people that, you know, require your trust and you require their trust. The best training partners I've ever had are the ones that I can trust the most, right? If I wanna have hard roles and I wanna get beat up, I'm gonna go to the black belts because I know they're not gonna hurt me. It'll be the safest butt whooping of my life, right? I always tell you guys that. Don't shy away from upper belt rounds. They're gonna take care of you. And that's the same action that you wanna reciprocate to your training partners. You wanna take care of them. 
because you develop trust and that's how you grow. I find that white belts can be a little too enthusiastic if they sink a submission and then they wanna rip it because it's exciting. They, they're finally getting the submission. You really wanna fight that urge. No one's gonna to wanna to train with you if you're hurting people. So go nice and slow, trust me on this. It'll lead you to many more rewarding years of jujitsu and many more rewarding relationships with your jujitsu journey. Let me know what used to work for you when you were a white belt. If you're currently a white belt, let me know what you're using. Let me know if you're using any of these or if you have others that are different, right? That other white belts could use. And as you guys might have noticed, I'm filming in a new location. I did launch my very own jujitsu school. So if you guys ever come out to Olmsted Falls, Ohio, come check us out. We're called Grindstone. We put a lot of effort into this place. We've got some uh, weight equipment. We've got a hack squat back there, dumbbells over here, cool lights, cool mats, cool emblems. It's a, it's a good place. We got a lot of good people in here so far. So yeah, guys, if you're ever in the area, feel free, hit me up and uh, I'd love to get some rounds in with you. So with that being said, let's close out the video. Sometimes backwards, always forwards. I'll catch you in the next one.